Hello there. Um, today, we will be discussing variables and data types, uh, what those mean in decisions, how we can create them in decisions, and the difference between the two. Now, these words may be a little confusing, so I'm going to try simplifying them as much as I can. So what are variables and data types? A variable is an object which holds a value in decisions memory. The value is what we refer to as data. The value of a variable may change throughout the life of the workflow, hence the name variable. These so this right here to the left is the definition of a variable. That's what I just said. Now a data type is the classification of data which tells decisions how the data is intended to be used. Um, in other words, it indicates the type of data a variable may hold. For instance, a variable that holds text strings has a data type string and it is called a string variable. Likewise, a variable that holds integers or whole numbers has the data type integer and is called an integer variable. Defining the data type of a variable tells decisions how to use that data or how um, the user intends that data to be processed in decisions. So here's an example which um, clearly shows the difference between a variable and a data type. So with the variable name, um, name could be um, John Doe, it could be Jane Doe, um, it could be Peter Parker. All these names are strings. The type, the data type of the variable name is string. Um, for the age, let's assume Peter Parker is 35. Jane Doe is 20 years old. These are integers or whole number values. That's the data type of age. Your salary usually is a bunch of numbers dot some other bunch of numbers. This data type is called a decimal. And when you can refer to the data type, uh, to the variable using the question mark, like is it caffeinated? Um, is it long? Is it short? Um, that could produce two answers, yes or no, true or false. That type of variable is called a Boolean. That's a Boolean data type. Why does this matter? Why do we care what variables and data types um, we use? We want to make sure that we're using the right variable the right data types for our variables we want a good fit in decisions selecting the correct data type is important because it ensures that variables are stored and used correctly in decisions choosing the incorrect data type for a variable in a workflow will inevitably result in an error when decisions attempts to process the data and this will blow up your entire workflow which we we don't want Imagine attempting to multiply two strings, one holding a value of two, the other holding a value of three. Now, technically, multiplying two by three should give you the number six, but because you, we, um, you would have stored them as strings, you strip those um, values of the ability to be multiplied. They are no longer treated as numbers. So you need to make sure that you would select the data type integer so that decisions can actually um, accurately process the numbers, multiply them and give you the output of six, which you expect. So in deciding which um, values to pass into variables in decisions, you can do it in one of uh, five ways. So we have constant values. Um, these are values that are created during design time. They never change. So it doesn't matter who's running the flow. 
It doesn't matter what other values are in the flow. If I have a constant value of 300, that value every time the flow runs is going to be 300. Doesn't matter. We can also ask decisions to use um, variables that are floating around inside our flow. That's when we use select from flow. This tells decisions that there is a value inside the flow. We don't yet know what the value holds, but we want you to pick that value and use when it gets to this step of the flow. Additionally, um, you can set a value or variable to ignore or not. These are not the same thing. Using ignore leaves the field completely empty, blank. There is nothing in there. Null, on the other hand, is actually a value. Does not necessarily mean empty, like most people assume. So please be careful when you pick null. We can also run converter. Doing that actually calls another flow in decisions to ingest and transform the data. So you could say, um, hey, decisions, when we get to this stage in our flow or this step in our flow, run another flow that's going to multiply a bunch of numbers and then bring it back into the flow so we can use it. And then we can build data. Now, this is for um, complex data types, which I will talk about a little bit later. Um, these data types have um, data members or other data fields inside them that can be exposed, uh, at which points you can define wh whichever data you want to use for each variable. This brings us to the end of this course. So here um, in our studio, I'm going to uh, create some of these variables, um, define the data types for those variables, and actually use those variables inside a flow to try to create um, or try to mimic a real life scenario. So inside my beginner training folder, I'm going to create a flow going to be a basic flow, and I'm going to call this variables and data types. I'm going to create that. And then once I do that, it brings me into our flow designer. Now up here, you'll notice there's a setup input data um, button. I press that. I have two options to use a design pattern, which we're not going to do and to define input data. That's what I want to do. So I want to create a simple flow that is going to take two numbers and multiply them. Really simple. So I want to use number A, which I'm just going to um, use an integer just to keep this simple, and number B. again an integer value. I'm going to save this and exit. So now that I have defined those two variables, I get to use them um, in, in my numerical steps in my flow. So coming here into the steps toolbox, I want to search for my multiplication step. There it is. I can drag this step onto my canvas and connect my start step to it. I'm going to drag my end step right here. And I'm going to connect that done step. When we go back onto that multiply step, um, here on the properties panel, it's asking for the values that we want to multiply. Now we have our by value and we have our value. I could input constant values if I wanted, 
Um, actually, I'm going to do that just so um, you can see what that looks like. So what I'm asking this flow to do is to multiply two by four. Really simple, not asking to do anything else, just multiply two by four. I'm gonna debug this flow. And when I start debugging, when I check the output, it gives me eight. Two by four is eight. I did not use that, um, the variables that I um, created just because I wanted you to get a sense of what um, using constant values looks like. So now I am going to ask it to select from flow which allows me to select either one of these numbers. So I'm gonna input number A here and then select from flow again and input number B. During runtime, when I debug, it's going to ask me what numbers I want to use in here. And so I'm gonna select three and then five. So now instead of using predefined numbers from the designer, Decisions is asking me to provide input during runtime. So when I start debugging, it's gonna finish that process and it's gonna output 15, which is the product of three and 15. Now we can use um, any data types to, to manipulate our flows. We can use strings and decisions actually has built-in steps for some of the data types um, that we can use. We can use um, get long date string. We can use um, get string from bytes, get string length, um, and a number of other steps. We can trim string, um, which will, um, you know, trim your string and um, a lot of other other um, other really cool features that Decisions provides. Um, there are built-in steps for dates, built-in steps for, um, for strings, like I said. And um, you could also create your own um, steps instead of uh, using these pre-built steps or put together a series of steps to achieve what you want. So maybe you want to splice and dice uh, some information you've received in order to create another string. You can do that by inputting, um, you know, a, a number of steps to do that for you. Um, so this is a very, very simple flow, but hopefully this gives you an idea of how to create and use um, vari variables inside the decisions uh, workflows.